Name's Margaret, 69, and still sharp as a tack. Spent my years running a tight ship at a hotel, worked my way up to manager, before I called it quits. My husband, George, he's the entrepreneurial sort, had his own venture that kept us more than comfortable. But don't get it twisted, we weren't ones for splashing cash left and right. I've always been about value, picking things for their durability, not their dazzle. George, he always had my back on this. Margaret, you've got a head on your shoulders that's worth two, he'd say with a nod. Keep pinching those pennies. And pinch we did, amassing a nice little cushion for ourselves. Our son, Alex, was the light of our lives. Gave him the best start we could, focusing on his education. Post-college, he dived into the family business, learning the ropes from George. When he hit 30, he came to us with a sparkle in his eye, said he'd found the one, a girl named Emily. We were all for it, eager to meet the lady who'd captured our boy's heart. Now, George, he's got an eye for character, and he wasn't sold on Emily from the jump. As we were setting up the house for their big introduction dinner, he muttered to me, Margaret, there's something about that girl. Keep your eyes peeled. George, let's give her a fair shake, I countered, adjusting the tablecloth. Alex seems over the moon. Just saying, keep a lookout, he grumbled, but he left it at that. The night they were to come over, I cooked up a storm. Wanted everything to be perfect for Emily's first impression of us. When they arrived, Alex was beaming, and Emily, well, she was a sight, polished and poised, but with a warmth in her smile. Dinner was laid out, and we all settled in, the air buzzing with a mix of anticipation and the scent of my roasted chicken. So, Emily, Alex tells us you're into graphic design? I ventured, hoping to break the ice. Yeah, I love it. It's my passion, really, Emily replied, her eyes lighting up. But tonight, I'm more interested in this amazing dinner. Margaret, you've outdone yourself. George chuckled, his usual stern demeanor softening a bit. Don't let the food distract you too much. We want to know all about you, what makes you tick. Emily laughed, a genuine, easy sound. Well, I'm an open book. Ask away. The evening rolled on, with stories shared and laughter bouncing off the walls. George, ever the skeptic, threw in his tough questions, but Emily held her own, her replies, both thoughtful and candid. That night, I felt a warm glow in my heart. Sure, George and I were cautious by nature, but seeing our son so happy, so in love, it was worth opening our doors, and our hearts, to whatever came next. Life had a way of moving on, even when you tried to stand still. After Emily joined the family, I did my best to stick to my guns about not meddling. Adults will manage their own lives, I'd always said. But sometimes, what you want to believe and what's staring you in the face don't quite line up. George repeated his concerns. That girl, she's got an angle, he said to me one quiet evening. We were sitting in our living room, the TV muttering to itself in the background. George, let them be. Alex is happy, I replied, folding some laundry, trying to keep the worry out of my voice. Happiness is one thing, being blind is another. Just watch, he grumbled, his eyes fixed on some late-night show that neither of us were watching. George's words hung in the air like smoke. I wanted to wave them away, but they lingered, stubborn and thick. It wasn't long before I started seeing little things. Emily had quit her job not long after the wedding, saying she wanted to focus on the house. Fair enough, I thought. But the house didn't seem to need that much focusing. Every time I visited, things were, well, just as they should be, but Emily was off and out. One afternoon, I dropped by, unannounced. Emily was there, surprisingly, sipping on some fancy-looking smoothie. Oh, it's just something new I'm trying she said, noticing my glance. You know, gotta stay healthy. I nodded, though I couldn't help but think of the price tag on her health kick. Is Alex home? I asked. Nope, busy with the business. You know how it is, she replied, her tone light, almost too light. Yeah, I do, I said, memories of George's long hours flooding back. 
he's working hard, then? Always, she said with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. But he says it's worth it. We're planning a little getaway. A break for both of us. That's nice, I managed, though alarm bells were ringing in my head. A getaway sounded expensive, especially with the business just transferred to Alex's hands. George's skepticism about Emily came back to me that evening. She's living it up, while our boy's grinding away, he said when I told him about the visit. Maybe she just wants to make the most of their time together, I suggested, though doubt was creeping into my own heart. Or maybe she's making the most of Alex's wallet, George countered. I didn't want to admit it, but George's words were finding fertile ground in my worries. It wasn't just about Emily quitting her job or her spending habits, it was about how she seemed to be steering Alex, our son, into a lifestyle that didn't fit with the values we'd tried to instill in him. Let's just keep an eye on things, for now, I said to George later. But we'll do it quietly. Alex is a grown man, and he needs to make his own decisions. George nodded, but there was a resolve in his gaze. We'll watch. And when the time comes, we'll be there for him. Life kept rolling, and despite my best efforts to keep a lid on my worries, things got a lot more complicated. George and I had our suspicions about Emily, but we never expected the curveball life was about to throw our way. It was out of nowhere. George, my rock, started feeling off. Nothing specific, just tired more than usual and a bit under the weather. We thought it was just a bug or the tail end of a cold. But when he didn't get any better, I nagged him until he went to see the doctor. That visit turned our world upside down. Blood cancer, they said. It felt like a cruel joke, a misdiagnosis surely. But it wasn't. The disease was aggressive, unforgiving. The speed at which everything happened next was dizzying. Treatments, consultations, hospital visits, it was a whirlwind of medical jargon and false hopes. George fought hard, bless him, but the cancer was merciless. Six months from diagnosis to, to the end. Just like that, he was gone. The night George passed, the house felt empty, colder somehow. I sat in our living room, surrounded by memories, feeling lost. George's warnings about Emily, his concerns for Alex, echoed in my mind. He'd been trying to protect us, even when facing his own mortality. We'll watch. And when the time comes, we'll be there for him, he had said. And now, it was all on me. The grief was a heavy companion in those days. But amidst it, there was a resolve forming inside me. George's passing was a stark reminder that life was unpredictable, and sitting back wasn't an option anymore. I had to keep an eye on Emily and Alex, maybe even closer now than before. George wouldn't be there to share his observations or to back me up, but I knew what needed to be done. When I got the news that Alex and Emily were expecting, it was like a burst of sunshine through the clouds. I was over the moon, thinking about the little one on the way. I figured it was the perfect chance to bridge any gaps between me and Emily. She seemed keen on the idea too, so I started dropping by their place more often, lending a hand wherever I could. I was all in, buying bits and bobs for the baby, nothing fancy, just good, solid stuff that I thought would come in handy. One afternoon, I showed up at their doorstep, arms laden with goodies. Emily's reaction, though, was far from what I expected. She sifted through the bags with a look that could sour milk. What's this? None of these are brand names, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. I was taken aback, not gonna lie. Honey, when it comes to babies, it's the quality that counts, not some fancy label. I tried to explain, keeping my voice even. Emily tossed a stuffed animal back into the bag like it was trash. Alex's got the money. And with his dad gone, well, it's ours now. We can afford the best for my daughter. Her words stung. Those savings are the result of years of careful spending. I shot back, feeling my temper rise. She just smirked, throwing the gifts aside. I deserve the best. So does my baby. I tried to chalk it up to hormones, telling myself things would get better once the baby arrived. 
but deep down, I knew we were worlds apart in our thinking. Visits to their house became more frequent as the due date approached. I wanted to be there for Emily, despite our differences. But every conversation seemed to circle back to her wanting the most expensive things for the baby, things that screamed more about status than sense. One day, I couldn't hold back. Emily, love, you know all these fancy things won't make a bit of difference to your baby, right? She needs love, warmth, and care, not designer labels. Emily huffed, rolling her eyes. You just don't get it. This is how I want to raise my daughter. Alex agrees with me, don't you, babe? Alex, caught in the middle, looked like a deer in headlights. Well, I just want what's best for you and the baby, M. I sighed, realizing this was a battle I wasn't going to win. Just remember, it's the time you spend with your child that counts, not the money. Emily's response was a dismissive wave as she turned her attention back to her phone, scrolling through pages of high-end baby gear. Leaving their house that day, I felt a mix of anger and sadness. It wasn't just about the money or the things. It was about values, about understanding what really mattered in life. I hoped, for Alex's sake and the baby's, that Emily would come to see that. But as I drove home, I couldn't shake off the feeling that we were heading for trouble. After the little one came into the world, I thought things might settle down. But boy, was I wrong. Emily's taste for the high life only got worse, turning my son's house into what looked more like a high-end store than a home. Cribs, strollers, toys you name it, if it had a designer label, it was probably somewhere in their living room. I kept telling myself it was all for my granddaughter, that she deserved the world and more. I spent as much time as I could with my granddaughter, taking her out for walks, just soaking up all the joy she brought into my life. I never asked for a dime from Emily for helping out. Truth be told, I would have paid them for the privilege of spending time with that little angel. One day, I came back from a walk a bit earlier than usual. My granddaughter needed a change, and I figured I'd pop in without making a fuss. Emily gave me a key for emergencies and to drop off food now and then, so I let myself in quietly, not wanting to startle anyone. As I tiptoed through the hallway, I heard voices coming from the living room. Emily was chatting with a friend, and what I heard next stopped me dead in my tracks. They were talking about money, my money, and Emily's plans to take a hefty chunk of it, divorce my son, and leave him high and dry. My heart sank as she went on about how little she cared for Alex and their daughter, how she was eyeing a way out and into the arms of another man. Panic and disbelief gripped me as I scrambled to get my phone out and hit record. I needed proof, something to show Alex, to protect him and my granddaughter from this scheming. But just as I got close enough to catch every treacherous word, my granddaughter stirred in my arms and started to cry. I quickly stashed my phone away and stepped into the living room, feigning ignorance. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I said, keeping my voice steady, despite the storm raging inside me. Just came in to change this little one. Emily glanced up, her face a mask of surprise that quickly shifted back to that cold, calculating look I'd come to know all too well. No problem, we were just finishing up anyway, she said, her voice dripping with faux sweetness. As I changed my granddaughter, my mind raced. How could I have been so blind? How could I protect my son and this innocent child from the fallout of Emily's selfish plans? The revelation hit me like a ton of bricks. I knew I had to act, and fast. But first, I needed to gather my thoughts, to plan my next steps carefully. My son's future, my granddaughter's well-being, they all hinged on what I did next. As I left their house that day, a resolve hardened within me. I wouldn't let Emily destroy my family. I had the truth on my side now, and I'd do whatever it took to expose her deceit and keep my loved ones safe. The walk home was a blur, my mind a whirlwind of fear, anger, and determination. This was war, and I was ready to fight. For my son, for my granddaughter, for the memory of a husband who had always taught me to stand up for what's right. The morning after I overheard Emily's shocking conversation, I was all set to call Alex and spill everything. But, as fate would have it, he beat me to the punch, ringing me up first thing. 
what he said next floored me. Mom, I think it's best if you don't come over anymore. Alex's voice was strained, awkward. I nearly dropped the phone. What are you talking about, Alex? Why? He hesitated. Emily, she's saying things got messy at the house after your visits. And some stuff's missing. Expensive stuff. I felt like I'd been slapped. Are you serious? She's pinning this on me? My voice cracked, a mix of hurt and disbelief churning inside. Mom, I just... It's complicated. Emily's upset, and I gotta support my wife, you know? Support his wife? Against his own mother? Alex, you know me. I'd never take anything from you guys. We need to talk, face to face. He sighed, the sound heavy over the line. I can't, mom. Work slammed. Just, give it some time, okay? I hung up, the phone slipping through my trembling hands. This was Emily's doing, clear as day. She was isolating me, turning my own son against me. But why? Was it just to cover her tracks, to keep me from spilling about her plans? I was in a daze, the accusations ringing in my ears. Me, accused of making a mess, of stealing? It was ludicrous, hurtful. And the worst part was Alex believing it, even for a second. In a world turned upside down, I found myself knocking on the door of my old lawyer, Mr. Thompson. The office smelled of leather and wisdom, a comfort in these turbulent times. Mrs. Davis, what brings you in today? Mr. Thompson asked, peering over his glasses as I took a seat across from him. I spilled everything, the whole sordid tale. He listened, nodding, his face a mask of concern. After I finished, he leaned back, steepling his fingers. Your husband was a wise man, Mrs. Davis. He saw the potential for trouble. The will, it's quite clear. You're the sole heir. Alex, well, he's essentially in a managerial position as long as you're around. The money they've been burning through? It's from a special account, already near empty. I felt a mix of relief and sadness. George, always looking out for us, even beyond the grave. So, what's left is safe from Emily's grasp. Exactly. Only you can access the main reserve, and not for another two years, he confirmed. I sighed, a weight lifting slightly. George, he always was thinking ahead. Mr. Thompson suggested a next step. Hiring a detective might be wise. Gather evidence of Emily's actions. It could be crucial. I shook my head, the thought of snooping around like that didn't sit right with me. No, I can't do that. It feels wrong. There has to be another way. Understood. But keep it in mind. Sometimes, we need hard evidence to open the eyes of those we love, he advised, his tone gentle yet firm. Leaving the office, I felt armed with new information, but burdened with how to use it. George had protected us in ways I hadn't even imagined, and now it was up to me to navigate these choppy waters without sinking our family ship. With a heavy heart, but a determined spirit, I hatched a plan that would either save my family or fracture it beyond repair. I dialed Emily, my voice steady. I've got an offer for you, one that's worth your while, $200,000. I said, cutting straight to the chase. Her interest was piqued. Go on. She replied, her tone dripping with a mix of curiosity and greed. We'll talk tomorrow. Be ready. I said, hanging up before she could probe further. Next, I called Alex. Son, I need you to do something for me. No questions asked, all right? It's for your daughter's safety. I implored him. He was hesitant but agreed. Okay, mom, what do you need? Install a baby monitor in your living room. Make sure it's hidden well. And listen in from your car tomorrow at noon. Please, just trust me. I explained. The next day felt like the longest of my life. As noon approached, I sat across from Emily, the air between us thick with unsaid words. I repeated my offer, watching her reaction closely. So, you think you can just buy me off with $200,000? Is that it? 
Emily sneered, her eyes cold and calculating. I kept my voice steady, despite the storm of emotions inside. It's a way out, Emily. For both of us. You get a fresh start, and we get peace. Emily laughed, a harsh sound that echoed off the walls. A fresh start? Please. You think I don't know about the real money? Your husband left you sitting on a gold mine, and you think I'm walking away from that with just pennies? I felt a chill run down my spine. This was worse than I thought. Emily, you're talking about destroying a family here. My son, your husband. Alex? She cut me off, her tone dripping with disdain. He's just a stepping stone. I've got plans, big plans. And they don't include playing happy families in this dead-end life. I swallowed hard, trying to maintain composure. And what about Lily? Your daughter? Does she fit into these plans of yours? Emily waved a hand dismissively. Lily will be fine. Once I'm done with Alex and have what I want, I'll have nannies for that. Besides, once I'm living the high life with someone who actually has ambition, she'll thank me. The audacity of her words left me speechless. This was no longer just about money, it was about a complete disregard for the family she had married into. And you, dear mother-in-law, Emily continued, leaning forward, a sinister gleam in her eyes. I've got special plans for you. Ever heard of those lovely little nursing homes? You'll have plenty of time to think about your mistakes there, away from my new life and all this money. Anger and disbelief warred within me. You think you can just take everything? That you can destroy lives and walk away? Emily smirked, standing up, her posture one of someone who believed they had already won. I don't think, I know. I've got everything planned out. Alex is clueless, and with you out of the picture, there'll be nothing stopping me. It was clear now, Emily was a predator, cloaked in the guise of a family member. But as I looked at her, a resolve hardened within me. She underestimated the bond of family, the strength of a mother's love. You're wrong, Emily. You've underestimated me, underestimated us. You won't get away with this, I said, my voice firm, laced with a determination I hadn't felt in years. Emily's laugh was cut short as Alex entered the room, his face a mask of shock and betrayal. The confrontation that followed was a blur, but one thing was clear, the truth was out, and with it, Emily's house of cards began to crumble. After the storm had passed, and Emily was out of our lives for good, Alex came to me one quiet evening. The air was cooler, carrying the promise of a fresh start. We sat down at the kitchen table, a space that had witnessed countless family discussions, both joyful and difficult. Mom, I... I don't even know where to start, Alex began, his voice heavy with emotion. I'm sorry. For everything. For not seeing what was right in front of me, for not listening to you. I reached across the table, taking his hand in mine. Alex, you're my son. There's nothing to forgive. We all make mistakes. What matters is that we learn from them and we move forward. He nodded, a single tear escaping down his cheek. I just, I can't believe I let her drive a wedge between us. That recording, it opened my eyes. I should have known better. Sometimes, love blinds us, Alex. You wanted to believe in the person you married. No one can fault you for that, I reassured him, squeezing his hand. He wiped away his tear, a small smile breaking through. I filed for divorce. And the judge granted me full custody of Lily. Emily, she didn't get a cent, thanks to that recording and the will dad left. I'm just glad it's over. And that Lily is safe with us, I said, the relief palpable in my voice. Yeah. And, Mom, I need you more than ever now. Will you help me raise her? His eyes, so much like his father's, held a mix of hope and fear. Alex, there's nothing I'd rather do more than be there for you and Lily. We're a family, and we'll get through this together. I promised, my heart full. In the weeks that followed, our home was filled with the sounds of a child's laughter once more. Lily, unaffected by the turmoil, brought a new sense of purpose and joy into our lives. 
Watching Alex grow into his role as a single father was a bittersweet reminder of the cycles of life. One afternoon, as Alex and I watched Lily play in the garden, he turned to me, a thoughtful look on his face. Mom, you were right. Sometimes, we have to step in, even when it's hard. Especially when it's hard. I'm just sorry it took me so long to see it. I smiled, watching Lily chase a butterfly. We live and learn, Alex. What's important is that we're here for each other, no matter what.